What's going on, everybody? Hopefully your weekend went well. It was pretty hot out this way. I got some work done around here. Um, making some improvements onto the room that I'm going to be turning into a bedroom. So that that's probably about, I would say, 60%, 70% complete. So by the end of next week and everything should be good for me to go ahead and get a bed and everything moved in there for when my mom comes down the following weekend. Alrighty, uh, real quick, thank you everybody for the support to the channel. I appreciate everybody who was able to stop in for uh, overtime on Friday night. We'll be doing that again this upcoming Friday night, 11 p.m. Eastern, with myself and Joey. Uh, Jacob might come in. Let me think here. Uh, August 21st. August 21st will be the day of the auction. It will definitely be uh, auction slash fixed pricing. You'll probably see more fixed pricing for me than auctioning that day. Uh, Tops Chrome Hobby will be in the store whenever I start it that day as well, too, in case people are interested in some hobby boxes. Right now, I'm thinking it's going to be $285 a box, but anything could change on prices between now and then. They could drop, they can go up. So I haven't really quoted an official price yet, but that's about where I'm at right now if everything stays the way it is. Trying to think here offhand because I redid this video because, <laughs> of course, somehow XSplit always updates and my microphone goes insane, insane across the board. So hopefully this will sound a little bit better than the last one that I uh, ended up doing here. So let's talk about My Slabs. My Slabs is a great site. 1% uh, seller fees onto it. You have to have a slab, whether it's PSA, Beckett, CGS, or SGC, or the four slabs they will accept. Um, they also do graded comic books and wax boxes, cases as well, too, on there. I've been a member of it for a long time, probably, I don't know how long they started before I joined, maybe a month or two at the most. But I've had nothing but a good experience on there. I did have two people not pay, and they were quickly booted from the site, which is good because that just shows the My Slabs team is very um, responsive and getting rid of stuff like that from their site. And I could I couldn't be happier. So over the weekend, I forgot that it was sometime in July they pushed out an email. And if you're not on social media, you would have missed it on their Facebook uh, group page. But they were going to start incorporating what they called a 1% buyer usage fee. So both the buyer and the seller were going to pay 1% to my slabs. I have no issue with it because as a buyer, more than likely I'm going to be paying sales tax off of eBay wherever I buy from. So... 1% to me, I mean, realistically, if I buy a card for 200 or I want to get a card for $200, do I mind spending 202 No, because I understand where the money is going to on it. And when you take in consideration the money put into the site, the advertising that he's doing, um, the changes with different, I don't know if it's servers or platforms that he's using as well, too making it to where it goes on to, I think it's uh, Apple and stuff like that on phones or iPads and all that stuff, all costs money. And it, he does, he provides a great service, or I should say a great platform for everybody out there. So I was browsing around on uh, their Facebook group page, and I ended up catching two different topics. One was about HGA and people basically attacking a guy that owns HGA, Tyler, saying that he's spending all this money in breaks and all that. I mean, realistically, he's been doing it prior to even launching HGA. So to me, it's no different than when before. But what caught my eye was people were like, when did this 1% buyer fee start? I believe it just started within the last few days. I don't know the official day. I think it was the 4th or something like that. And I will tell you now, I just sold it, sold something on uh, my slabs today. So say you sell a card for $400, you're going to get $404 to your PayPal. 
because my slab is going to take that 1% that kind of like got piggybacked on your transaction, then they're going to charge you that 1% seller fee too. So just be aware of that offhand. And just knowing from doing taxes for years, you're going to have to record that as a, the wholesale, the 404 and not the 400. Because PayPal is going to give you a 1099 with that extra 4 bucks on it too. So just make sure uh, whoever's doing your taxes understands that, that you're paying that premium as a seller and then also as a buyer now too because uh, it is tax deductible. It is tax deductible. But a lot of people, uh, I wouldn't say a lot, there was a few select people that were really, I guess you could say hating, trolling, whatever the terminology is really anymore on to it. And they were like, oh, I'm leaving the site and all this stuff. Well, here's the way I look at it. Uh, and one was this, that if I was to buy on eBay, I'd have to pay for shipping. Shipping's included on your uh, price on my slabs. So you have to incorporate it into the price of the sale. At the same time frame, I'd have to pay sales tax wherever I bought from. My God, there's a few states that don't do sales tax out there. And even if I was in one of those states, I still wouldn't mind paying the 1% buyer usage fee. I do know some of the big auction houses charge a buyer's premium up to 20%. So say you bought a card for $100,000, you're going to be billed one twenty dollars for it. And it's just the way the auction houses work on to that stuff. Um, that's how they make their money and stay in business and do all their promotions and all that stuff on to it. But I just really didn't see the... I guess more likely, whenever you're used to a change that, or used to one way that has money get, being collected... And then all of a sudden it changes, you know, people are like, oh, there's another 1%. What are you going to be doing? You're just out for the money and all this stuff. And realistically, he's not. There's a lot of stuff that he has to pay for, for, you know, getting updates done on the site and hiring somebody to do that. You also have to pay for your domain, your server, all that stuff across the board. So, I mean, realistically, I don't know how much he does a month. I don't track all this stuff. I'm just using this for example. If, say, in the month of July, he had $100,000 in sales, he's getting paid $1,000. That's going to come close to covering just what he does on his website, probably for the hosting, the server, and all the other stuff that, you know, goes on to it. Plus, he has people that works for him uh, customer service-wise, I'm sure, is getting paid, too. So... You know, when it comes down to it, he can't lose money on it. He provides us a great service. That whole team provides us a great service by this site. Um, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about here real quick. Sorry, I pulled up earlier. This is the thing if you go into it. Fees for buyers. Fees for buyers are based on one's usage of the site. Therefore, a 1% buyer usage fee is calculated and is built along with the successful purchases. And... As you can see, I mean, it's for the support and maintenance of the platform, and I, I agree with it. He shouldn't have to come out of his pocket every month if, you know, he didn't make X amount in sales that month because the service uh, it, they're providing for both a seller and a buyer and the protection that goes along with it is well, well worth it, in my own opinion. Um, if you deal with my slabs, God, you didn't know about this, well, now you kind of do. But I'm just curious what everybody else thinks. I, I have no issue with this. None at all. Um, a lot of people, uh, not a lot of people, I'd say, like I said, a select group of individuals did. I saw this talked about now in a blowout forum, too. And, you know, majority of them are all like, it's 1%, $100. I pay 101 for a card. You think I'm not going to give an extra dollar to get a card I want? And that's the exact point. I guess, you know... It's really up to that person's perspective, but if you, I would use this site. I would definitely buy, I do buy, and I definitely do sell on. I just see a lot of benefits on to it. I mean, he posts uh, X amount of cards today or per day on Instagram and his Facebook group, and I, I don't even know what other platforms out there. So it, it's really good because he's promoting the business and helping us sell cards out there. All right, let me move on to the next thing here. But if you guys have a MySlabs account, let me know what you guys think in the comments section. 
again, my opinion is it's not going to hinder me from buying or selling. It's a great site. Um, they provide a great service. I, I've never had an issue with it. PSA. PSA. Um, they're moving. They're moving along really, really well with everything. As you can see, regular is pretty much all complete. I think all the complete through dates may, may dip it a little bit in April, but they're pretty much going to be completed out here this month, if not this week, next week, whenever it may be. Uh, I'm guessing that we'll probably see regular probably bouncing back in, after Labor Day. After Labor Day. I don't think he'll release regular and economy both at the same time frame. At least if it was my business module, or I wouldn't do it. I would do economy starting like in October just to see how much they get slammed with regular offhand. When you start looking at the value, um, they're moving. I can tell you the November being 43% done is pretty much accurate from what I can see. And I know people that have had orders, I want to say it was like December 13th, 14th, complete through date that have now gotten it back too. So it just depends on where, how your stuff was, I guess, processed to what, you know, SKU number or however they do it of when it's going to get done. I could realistically see them bring back value beginning of next year. And honestly, if it was my company... Even if my value would be caught up enough by, say, end of November, beginning of December, I would probably look at this. And I know as a collector or a flipper, it's not something you want to hear. But I probably wouldn't put anything in before the Christmas holiday. I, I would wait till the new year and at least let people have time off for Christmas, the New Year's, and all that stuff. And then start the year fresh by bringing value back in. But... You know, like I said, those are just my thoughts offhand on to it. I mean, yeah, it would suck that they're caught up a little bit earlier, that they don't bring it back. But I would at least do it that way from a business standpoint because a lot of employees are going to want to take time off for the holiday, you know, the Christmas time frame through New Year's. And I'd let them do that. Um. Also, what I want to say is these complete through dates are for members only. This is not for the group submitters. But the one thing that I keep on hoping that they'll do is make a small section just for group submitters to where all their stuff goes there because it would make it a lot easier and better for the members only who submit on their own. And the reason I say this before, there are people paying $200 a month or $250, whatever it was, for the big membership. And they were watching group submitters getting their stuff back quicker than somebody that has a paid membership. I think you could still provide that to the bulk, or to the uh, group submitters out there. But they have their own section. And, you know, maybe give them a weekly update email to all those group submitters of where stuff's at on their statuses and leave this the way it is. Because you you want, if I was uh, like the PSA president or CEO, I would want people to uh, pay for memberships through me. Because that offsets costs to where I don't believe the group submitters pay any kind of you know, membership fee for that. I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm not a group submitter owner person out there. If you are, please let me know because I'm, I'm kind of curious on to it. I mean, maybe they charge you guys a $1,000 membership per year. Then I would completely change my thought process on to it all. But from what I'm thinking right now and seeing is I would may have them have their, like their own little group of people that do their stuff and then – for the grading part of it all and then leave everybody else handling the members only. So hopefully, hopefully that makes sense to make sense. But I mean, they are catching up pretty good. I sit there and uh, belong to a couple different PSA groups that post, you know, all their dates across the board for each order and stuff like that. And I could see them trucking along. I know different people have different theories out there. Some say they have 10 million cards less. Some say four. I, nobody knows the PSA offhand. I also see where people are saying, oh, they're completing 150,000 cards this month or that month. 
I mean, realistically, that's a lot of cards from prior, prior pre-COVID that they're actually grading now. A lot. And I know Genomit's implemented now, so I'm wondering how much that's playing either into speeding up the process or actually kind of slowing it down. It would be interesting to know that. Um, maybe I'll try to reach out to them and see if they wouldn't mind doing something with a small little 15, 20 minute like interview type deal or that I could post online about it. I, Cause it would be interesting to actually hear about the gentleman process and how it was incorporated. Is it speeding up the process, slowing it down? And then to see, you know, once everything gets back to normal, are we going to see maybe Express Regular and Economy drop a little bit in price? Are they going to stay at that price level? Or will it only drop once people stop using, you know, those services? And people, you know, a lot of the people that came into the hobby for flipping and profit all start moving to a new area to invest their money into. Um because I, I don't ever think we're going to see a boom like we did. I, I really don't. Uh, maybe for the younger generation out there that are, you know, in their late teens or in their 20s, they might. Because this is the way I look at it. You know, bell-bottom jeans was around, what, late 70s, I think even into early 80s possibly. And it died away. It made a comeback about, oh, man, I'm trying to think, was it about 10 years ago maybe? Or so, there was a small fad that came across onto it. So, you know, you might see something like that to where there's another bump, but I don't think it's going to be like everything goes crazy so quickly, no matter what the sport card type and everything else is out there like it did. Uh, two other things I want to touch on real quick in case you missed overtime. I don't think... That the hobby is dying, as what a lot of people are thinking, because a lot of the research is done based off of eBay sales. If you look at the month of July, there was really three big card shows. You had the, uh, was it Fairdale in California, or Fairmont, one of the two. I can't remember. I think it was Fairdale. Then you had both, like two weeks later or a week later, you had, Dallas and Atlanta both the same weekend. A lot of money changed hands, cash-wise, at those. On top of it, a lot of people were saving to go to the National and just, you know, spend. With that being said, that's a lot of cash transactions, which would hinder what the eBay sales would have been for the month of July. Um, you guys can see videos out there with what people are buying and spending all across the board. I think that covers it. Plus, you got platforms like MySlabs that has stuff going on. You got Facebook sales, Instagram sales, Twitter, all this stuff with money going from Stripe, PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, and all those other different services out there. So, I... I think it's fine. I mean, I do understand where a lot of people are concerned the market dipped. But if you look pre-COVID to what the market is now, it's still a significant bump across the board. And now we'll be looking more at um, player stats, um, their accomplishments, you know, title wins, award winnings to retirements, and then unfortunate deaths that's going to push stuff up and over. Or unless, you know, just a whole bunch of people just all of a sudden want to buy one particular player, it'll go up. But that's about it. Every, every, wait, yeah, was that everything? I thought there was something else I wanted to hit on, too. It might have just went out in and out my uh, good old memory real quick. The sales off of eBay... Oh, no, no, that was pretty much it. I'm pretty sure of it. I had to redo the video, like I say, because the volume issue that last time. It was like, almost like I was on max and yelling at everybody, even though like this was my normal voice on to it. All right, everybody, take care. Have a good week. I will catch you all next video.